Summers. The one season where no one wants to be outside on a sunny afternoon. Go figure. But if you need to go outside, you'll hear, put some sunscreen on. What's that all about? And they'll typically tell you to wear something with a certain SPF. Now who would figure, what is an SPF number? Is it really useful? Is it something that actually means anything? Or is it just something that's marketing? Let's find out on the channel today. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nene. I practice as a cardiothoracic, vascular, and general surgeon in the US for almost 20 years. Some of the most rewarding years of my life. I now have an opportunity to work as a health tech innovator whose goal is simple, to improve lives and lifestyles by increasing awareness and access to world-class international medical standards. This channel is a part of that effort, and the idea is to explore the best practices in healthcare globally. So join me on our journey to make the world a better place. The sun is your enemy and your friend. Why is it your enemy? Because the risk of sun-related cancers has gone up dramatically, and if not diagnosed and treated, can result in fatalities. Applying sunscreen to your face, neck, chest, ears, hands, and arms daily is recommended to prevent that type of long-term sun damage. But the real puzzle is, what do you do? Some people think that you don't need to wear sunscreen in the car. And in fact, in some cases that's true, where you have UV blocking windows. But in fact, there have been studies to show that the side windows don't block it completely. And then finally, do you need to wear it on a cloudy day? These are all questions which people ask, and the idea is that UV radiation actually goes through the clouds. And so you can get burned on a cloudy day. And do people with melanin need to wear it? Well, the answer is they can get burned as well. This has been shown in cases where people who had melanin and got cancers of the skin um, could actually have higher mortalities in some cases. So let's go back to the start. What is SPF? It's not what you think. It's called sun protection factor, but it's actually a measure of how much solar energy, in this case UVA and UVB, is delivered to your skin. And the way it's quantitated is they look at the proportion of patients who have sunscreen on and how much time it takes for their skin to turn red versus an equal number of patients who have no sunscreen on and how many seconds it takes for their skin to turn red. And then they take the two and divide them. So if it took 300 seconds in the case of a patient who had sunscreen on and 10 seconds in the case of a patient who didn't, your SPF would be 30. The real question is, how do we know if that really works? And secondly, unlike what people say, does a higher SPF confer more time in the sun? So here come all the interesting answers. The first is that over a certain percentage, in this case an SPF of 30, there isn't a huge gain in sun protection factor. And it goes from about 96.7% to about 98% in the case of SPF 50. Would I ever recommend using it in certain patients? Well, if you have a strong family history of skin cancers, or you have no melanin in your skin, or you're always in the sun, I might recommend doing that. The second thing is you have to have to keep placing it on every two to three hours because it will uh, go away with your sweat. It will go away with brushing it off. Next, the question is, what other things can you do as an adjunct? And it's pretty clear, and we've talked about this in another talk, that if you're in a country which is tropical or subtropical, like where I live in India, you have to take protection by not going out in the hottest parts of the day, wearing clothes which cover up most of your skin, and then making sure that you wear sunscreen in parts which you can't cover, like your face, your neck, and your hands. There's one other thing I wanted to tell you is that if you go swimming or get wet, you need to put that sunscreen on again. The idea with this is to try to get you to protect your skin because you need it for a lifetime. And the last thing you want is to have a event where you end up with a cancer or worse yet, a smaller event like sunburn, which believe me, I've been sunburned before, so have you. In addition to those possibilities though, you can also get sunspots, freckles, and other things. So the idea is to take the protection when you need it. If you liked what we said, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel to see more interesting talks like this. Hit the bell icon so that you'll get the next talk in the series. And always share this with all your friends. 
And as always, I've left the references in the description and you can help me by leaving comments down below so that I can guide my talks and move in the right direction. Thank you so much for joining me and it's been a pleasure. I'll see you in the next talk.